So secondary progressive MS arises in patients who start out as relapsing remitting and then enter a phase where they're gradually worsening independent of any relapses. Um, and it's actually a difficult um, characterization to make uh, because there's a lot of um, vagueness to that. It, you know, there's no set criteria other than it's, it's progression, the absence of activity, but it's, it's hard to determine. And, and when people have tried to look at how long it takes to actually make that determination, it could take several years before you're satisfied that the individual actually is progressively worsening. And again, it has to be without any inflammatory, any, well, any relapse activity uh, in between. And sometimes you'll have a relapse that can confound the issue of whether there is progression as well. And we're still trying to get a handle on this. There's analyses being done, looking at even relapsing remitting populations where there's a percentage of individuals who do worsen on, for example, their EDSS score over time and never have had any clinical relapses. Um, but that's, that's the essence of it. So it's easy to say what secondary progressive is. It's harder to make that determination in the clinic. You've got to follow the patients over time before you're comfortable enough saying, yeah, this really is worsening. Because in all patients, there's a certain degree of fluctuation uh, in their signs and symptoms. So right now, uh, it's all clinical. It's all the observations of the clinician. There's no MRI definition for secondary progressive MS. And, and when we've done the clinical course criteria, both in 1996 and again in 2013, we looked at what MRI could tell us. And we also looked at what fluid biomarkers could tell us. And that's still the case now. You, you cannot uh, go to your very best neuroradiologist and put up an MRI scan and say, can you tell me whether this is clinically isolated syndrome or, or secondary progressive MS or primary progressive MS? It doesn't exist. So the MRI doesn't help you. Our biomarkers for the moment don't help you. So it's what the clinician says it is. And that's based on the observation of the patient's behavior over time. 